DeepSeek R1. How is it affecting the other companies? OpenAI, Anthropic, and their Claude model. So DeepSeek, the Chinese company, put out their R1 model a week ago, and it really kind of stunned people. Has there been any reaction from the other AI companies since then? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this small company has shattered these big billion dollar companies at its core with only $6 million. And what has happened is it forced these big companies to go and release things ahead of schedule. So we just got the O3 and the O3 logic model for the pro users on OpenAI's plan. So what that does is basically, it before OpenAI, you would ask the question, it would kind of close its doors and give you an answer. But since DeepC came out in this reasoning model, it showed you the steps it broke down to get to the answer. OpenAI brought that back with O3Logic and O3. So now when you ask O3, O3Logic a question, it's going to show you the learning model it's using is reasoning and be more open to the public. Right. So as I understand it, the secret behind OpenAI's O1 model mm -hmm. is chain of thought. Right. It would spell out the steps of what should I do to solve this problem? And what would the first step be before it gets around to finally solving it? But they'd hide all that conversation exactly. from you. So yeah. it just seemed to be a model that took longer to solve the problem, but was more likely to come up with the right, right. answer. And I still think that's the case. So I look at O3 and, and O1 Pro as sort of a, like a JIT compiler, whereas R1 is more like a streaming processor, right? They're two totally different entities that come up with different answers, but R1 is the game changer right now. So after a week of playing with R1, yes. how are you feeling about it? feel okay. I mean, I still feel that these big billion dollar companies are the leader in AI technology. I'm glad that it's shaking the ground because being declared a winner in its infancy is really horrible for all of us. But the fact that it's open source and they give us this code and allow us to run it locally is a game changer. Because now instead of training open AIs, we're paying them and we're training their models. Now we get to use this open source, put on our machines and train it ourselves. Yeah, I have to be honest, playing with DeepSeek for another week, I'm a little less impressed than I was, right? It, yes. it showed up with those amazing scores on all the benchmarks. I'm not sure that it's nearly as good as I thought it was at first. <laughs> right. There are different models of DeepSeek. So R1 is the latest, but R1 comes with different token input parameters. And the larger you go, the better the results are going to be. So a lot of these test cases that we're using are these lower end models that we're putting on Raspberry Pis, we're putting on our Mac machines, and these can't compete with the higher end O1 Pro models. I have not, and I don't even think the chat-based DeepSeek goes into the, the largest token base. So maybe these supercomputers that are running these benchmarks on are coming up with these high end marks, but not the version we're using. You said an interesting thing. Can you really run DeepSeek on a Raspberry Pi? <laughs> Absolutely. So if you go and you download load Olama and you get a copy of R1 Latest and get one of its smaller packages, you could put it on a Raspberry Pi, unplug it from the internet, and now you have a more privacy-based, your own chat GPT model. So with no internet, because that, that obviously a lot of people are worried, deep seek. Right. It's this Chinese thing. Is it sending yes. everything you put in off to China? And wh while everybody says, oh, it's privacy. Set. I don't trust anything. Take Probably that Raspberry Pi off the internet. There's no way it's going back to anywhere, let alone foreign countries. And then you could ask it the deep questions. You could put maybe some of the sensitive code in there that you want to ask questions to. And it's just contained in your own computer. So do you think that's the future for companies? I mean, I know a lot of companies are worried. And there were some, I think there were some comments from Samsung that appeared in OpenAI's output that made people think, that a lot of their internal code had made it in. So do you think that's the future? Are software companies going to run their own AI to help on their code? I do. I think it's now going to saturate the market. I think people are going to either take this R1-based open source, package it up in their own models, ship it out as a new entity altogether, or they're going to train their own models based on this at cheaper prices, cheaper ways to run it. You're going to have different tiers of AI, and I think this is the groundbreaking start of that revolution. It's not the only open source, right? Llama from Meta yes. is also open source. Yes. I understand you know, they were a little flummoxed <laughs> <laughs> yes. to be caught by surprise yeah. that this other open source thing seem to be ahead of them. But I assume since they're open source, it won't be a big deal, right? They'll just pull in whatever was better and make a new better thing. You would think, yeah, I guess it comes down to the the integrity of each company of how they're going to train their models and what works they're going to train it on. And I know Meta has its problems, but every new AI model that comes to the market is all of a sudden the next latest and greatest. DeepSeek is now up front, latest and greatest until we come to another model next week. So, so you were talking about using Olama yes. in order to run Deep seek. I see a lot of people complaining about Olama saying that it's mostly just a wrapper around Meta's Llama and that yeah. they're they're constantly taking and trying to take credit for stuff that Meta did. 
Tell me about Olama. So Olama is the way that you could run these language models on your machine locally. So you tell Llama, here's the package for DeepSeaGAR1, and then you're able to use that in your terminal or create you know, VX code extensions to run these language models locally. Okay, so it's, it's a wrapper around another model. Exactly. That lets you easily use it. Compared to Llama, which is Meta's AI model, language model. Right, right, right. So most people are using Olama to run Llama. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Put that one together. An interesting thing about DeepSeek, it brought to everyone's attention this mm -hmm. idea of distilling. That if you have an AI, mm -hmm. you can train another AI off that first AI, and it turns out you get something just as smart, but much, much smaller and much faster. Yes. Because you take all the good stuff, forget all the all the, all stuff the empty that you don't buckets. Yes. All the empty buckets yeah. you can finally throw away. And I think the refinery is where you get it. So O3 from AI O3 logic is more about logic, reasoning, and coding, and it got rid of all the crud that it doesn't need, such as you know, creating magazine articles and, and Facebook posts. It's not good at that stuff. So that's kind of what OpenAI is doing with these different GPT models. Right. So my understanding is all the turbo models. They came yes. out with ChatGPT4 mm -hmm. and then ChatGPT4 Turbo. The turbo is that they trained another AI themselves to suck everything ChatGPT4 learned into a fresh new model. Yes. And so it knows everything, and yet it's much smaller and more compact. That's what the mini... And the, the the name of the game is response time. So you get these mini models who are specialized in these niche categories are going to give you a fast response, a more accurate response. And that's what they're selling us. So I was watching a Jay Christina video and he was talking about the AI yes. that controls Speedify and how it uses it to spread your traffic across multiple yes. internet connections. Can you talk about that a little oh, bit? Oh, well, it was a brand new AI model. It's called Kevin GPT. <laughs> <laughs> so to clarify that, we do not use any AI models in Speedify. We have have one of the best engineers in, in the world working on Speedify who can Just blow crafting away. rule yes. after rule after yes. rule of what to do in every situation. Highly complimentary. Kevin is our at-home robot, but yeah, it is, there is no AI in Speedify at this moment. It is all written But do by. you use any AI to make Speedify? We do. We use AI in certain aspects of Speedify. So in the user interface, when you get translations, we're now using ChatGPT for translations. It's great at that. It knows that. Mm -hmm. We can tell it what type of language to use. We can tell it about networking, and it does its job. We do have some research and development. We are experimenting with different things, but as of now, there's nothing in our engine that's AI based. Do you use it to help write the code? No writing the code. <laughs> no writing the code. Maybe bounce some ideas off. Maybe a little, you know, ask about refactoring. But there's nothing that we feed proprietary information to to these models at this point in time. If any of you are human beings watching this video and not just AIs training your new model, then be sure to subscribe to get more videos like this.